I'm Kylie Bartlett, social media commentator and strategist. I'm interviewing small business owners and tackling their biggest social media challenges live on the show. I'm on a mission to talk about what social media really is and how to successfully apply it to your business. It's Smee for Smee, social media education for small medium enterprises. Hi everyone. On today's episode, we get to chat with Geelong's biggest coffee king, Robbie Lacino from King of the Castle on how he's managed to get his Instagram followers to help paint his new premises in return for a free cup of his incredible coffee. He spills the beans on why he believes honesty is the best policy when it comes to building a raving, loyal social media fan base. We've got a great tech tool to share later in the show that will help you capture all your information and save it to one centralised location. But first, let me share a little bit more about this week's business, King of the Castle, and see what I got up to on my visit. I don't know too many people that can go a day without coffee, but add the personalised, unique experience with great coffee, service, decor, branding, pop-up shops, and magic happens. That is what King of the Castle owner and entrepreneur Robbie Lucchino has created. You can't help but want to hang out in this place. Robbie's contagious enthusiasm is like a magnet on and offline. With a huge social following, he truly is the master at creating community. You can't fake this kind of stuff. It comes from being authentic and having a collaborative approach to business. Please welcome to this week's episode, Robbie from King of the Castle. Thank you. You have no idea how excited I am to be interviewing you. It's like there's this new cult going on in Geelong around your business and I'm really going to be fascinated to hear the story behind it. But hey, did I read on Instagram you've just got a licence now to be able to put a cafe in? Yep, that's right. So we submitted a permit about uh, back in June and we've been waiting on that to come through. So now we've got the go ahead and we will complete King of the Castle. Incredible. Yeah. So the castle's about to become bigger. Yep, yep. Stage two and stage three, we're calling it. So stage two will be the cafe aspect out the back. Yep. Uh, full kitchen. And stage three is the alfresco in the backyard. Magnificent. Yep. Beautiful. Just in time. So that'll be just in time for next summer, right? Yeah, I'm hoping by the end of February we should be done. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so tell me, I'm intrigued. Where did the name King of the Castle come from? Um, I've been asked this before. I don't really have a story behind it, but it was just a name that stuck in my head. But then I guess from that was really good because then that encouraged me to find a place to suit that name. A castle, right? A castle, yeah. And how, what was the building that you're in before? Was it a mechanic or...? Well, I'm in the mechanics now. Before this, I was in a, just a side... Side street, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just down the driveway of a cake shop. So I think we were 13 squares. And although I, it was still my castle, but I always knew that that wasn't there was ever, something bigger. There's something planned. bigger than that, yeah. And now look at it. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. It doesn't matter where I go, and I'm not just talking in Geelong, Melbourne, and Sydney. People are following you on Instagram, which now brings me to the story of tell me the story. How did it all get started with Instagram? Because now you post something on Instagram and it goes crazy. Uh, yeah, true. I sort of only knew about Facebook before I started King of the Castle. I had a friend of mine, Gemma, from home who does a lot of social media and she encouraged me to look at Instagram. And it just sort so of- So hang on, hang on, let me roll it back. You didn't even know about Instagram? No, like, no. And you've just had your 12th birthday? Yep. And you've just jumped on and you've created all this in 12 months? 12th, first year birthday. Unbelievable. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And now you've got, now, you, now you're doing Instagram, but you didn't even know about it before that really? No, no. And I still do get a lot of people uh, from other businesses and that coming in asking who does it for me but I think that when it comes to businesses you should really be in charge of what goes out on your social media. I'm going to really hone in on that point because yep. you bring up a great point there. So many people come to me and say who can I outsource my social media to and I'm saying as a small business outsource everything but don't outsource you yeah, no, and never. I don't believe that anyone can do a business better than an owner of a business. They, they can't capture that moment or talk with essence or Yep. purpose or passion and that's what you've managed to do really well which brings me to the next point like what is it what's your secret sauce it just <laughs> when it comes together it just goes crazy <laughs> tell me the story behind it tell me your secrets um i think it honestly it just has to come from the heart right and because this is my 
my baby, my passion. I see things differently to what other people do. Um, even five minutes before I came here, I took a quick snap of all the mums sitting outside and that excites me. And I popped that on social media and I thought, well, you know, it, it'll either get likes or it won't and it's already going mental. People love seeing that. People just love just seeing personable, honest posts. I know, and I saw the one you took of the footy players on the weekend. Uh, James, yeah, James, is all, he's quite a regular. So I, I had Sunday off, but I, I find it really hard to stay away. I saw that. I, yeah. thought, I saw you right, you have Sunday off, but I can't stay away. It's not even to go in and check on my staff. It's just having that opportunity to sit outside and talk to these customers that are there every day. And that's what you do so well. And I think that whole what you're talking about with honesty and speaking from the heart, your photos radiate. Like that, you can feel your heartbeat running through your photos. And I think that's one of your secret weapons. It's not filtered, it's not sanitized. The photos are real and they're yeah. all different, but they're capturing such the essence of what people are doing and enjoying your coffee. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree, yeah. So what else? Tell me other things that you're doing with your, with your um, Instagram. I've just sort of discovered in the past month or so that especially being in Geelong, we've got, I think we're sitting on a, a gold mine of creative, amazing people. We do. And I've had that, you know, the, I've been, been so lucky to start collaborating with a lot of them, but there's still a lot that are undiscovered. Yes. Um, so I've st I did do a competition for my birthday week where we gave away prizes. And rather than just give away the prizes, I encouraged my followers to follow these pages. And it's been pretty successful for these guys, which is great. Because that's all I, I just want these people to You're be. You're paying it forward, right? Absolutely. And I, I feel like it comes back in return. Not that I look for it, but like I think it has anyway for yeah. me. Yeah. So it's just, you know, even on Sunday sitting out there, one of the ladies who I helped, she was just walking in and she just came over and just grabbed me and hugged me and said, thank you so much. Because what you're doing, right, is you've, you're getting other businesses that are supporting you and you're supporting them by putting up a prize onto your Instagram, go and like their Instagram yep. page, hashtag, yep. and now all of a sudden they're getting followers. And then of course, the people that are entering yeah. are also winning Absolutely. amazing gifts, right? Yep. So it's shining the light on other businesses and that's what you've done incredibly well. Yeah, it's, it's just making it aware to other people, like yeah. all these small businesses, so. And so it's, what's coming back to is your intent though, Robbie, I can hear it very clear. You've got an amazing intent that it's about serving first and selling second. So ha yeah, was absolutely. That, did you do that on purpose? That's just a part of who you are. I think these are the traits that I used, I thought that I used to get in trouble for in relationships, <laughs> but it seems to be working with you the wear business. Your heart sleep, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll always put someone else before myself and I seem to be doing that with work now. And yeah. it's great because now I'm not being reprimanded for it. I'm actually being rewarded. rewarded for it. So yeah. And it's not even materialistic. It's just, it's just that satisfaction of knowing that, you know, these people are happy. Yeah. So from what I'm hearing, you're saying people are going to Instagram for more than just products and services. They're going there for inspiration, right? They're going yep. there to hear people's journeys. And yep. have you found that sharing a bit of your personal story is what really is people are gravitating towards your brand because of that? Yeah, absolutely. And even just having holidays not long ago, I decided to hand my Instagram over to someone, somebody else at work. Wow, who, who little did baby. A, well, in, in three or four days of being over there, he actually emailed me and said, listen, you need to back off because I was just getting on Instagram over there and liking things and he, it was setting up a confusion. So I did back off, but I still felt that people wanted to know what I was doing overseas. Yeah. And so I posted a couple of personal posts where I was just on holidays and yes. people loved that. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, it's inspiring for people that are looking for something, like they want, they have a dream. And I, I feel like I'm a really good role model for that. Because you are, and you're not, you're not stuck up, you know, you're so humble, you're so real. And I think others that are following you are not jealous in any way. They're proud of you yep. and they want to be a part of your journey. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think if you can, you know, help two or three people do the, the same thing, like I can already tell you three or four people that have come to me and said, because of you, I'm going to go do this now. Great. And that's, that's awesome. Legacy, hey? Yeah. yeah. Now I've got to ask this question and it's been going all around Geelong. How on earth did you get your Instagram followers to come and help you paint your yeah. new premises in return, not for money, but a cup of your amazing coffee. Share yeah. the story. Um, so the transition from the old space over to the new space 
it was looking a little bit daunting and I just thought, is it cheeky to ask for a little bit of help? And so I did it in a polite way and just said, look, this is what time we're doing it. If anyone wants to help, feel free to help. Um, we had pizza and stuff supplied afterwards. And we actually got to a stage where we had too many, you know, when there's just too many people there. No, we, no <laughs> most people don't know what it's like to have too many volunteers. Yeah, it was really good. It was so good. And in saying that, there was like at least half a dozen people who were my regulars, but never had that, we never had that conversation. Connection. And they were there. Yeah, incredible, and hey. Yeah, and, and people stuck around. They did a good four or five hours solid work, solid. Painting. And we got from the old King of the Castle into the new one within four or five hours. All because of a community, right? Absolutely. And what I'm hearing here, Robbie, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's nearly like your business has got all of these little mini shareholders. Yeah, true. Which are your Instagram followers, yeah, right? Absolutely. And like they feel like they've got a vested interest in this place being amazing because this is where we want to spend our time. Yeah, that's so true. I, I see that when I see people walking in who have been there from day one or people that have just been there for the past three months, it still feels like it's theirs. And even today, we were busy. And, and I'll was, drag you out. It was so hard to just get out and clear tables, but I, I guarantee you everybody just brings in the dishes. They know where the sink is. They, it's just great. It's awesome. So you let go of the power, right? And you've handed some of it yeah, over to your community. Absolutely. So if, if we've got small business viewers watching this show, what are some tips? Like what is a couple of little takeaways that small business could be doing right now to help increase their social media success? Um, I definitely think if it's local, we need to really embrace what we've got down here. Yeah, I, show off where we are in Geelong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, what, I, what I'm doing down in Geelong is what I wanted to do in Melbourne, and I refused to come down to Geelong for over 12 months, but I'd, I would never ever get what I'm getting now in Melbourne. Yeah. So yeah, just embrace what's around us, be completely honest when you're posting as well. Yeah, I love that. So just be raw, be real, yep. don't sugarcoat it. Yep, like yesterday, Yep, just popped into the cafe, so grab a photo and just post it. Yeah. It's just about being honest. Yep. Um, always good intention. Have the right intent, serve always. first, sell second. Absolutely. And like, don't get me wrong, we do post about retail and it's really successful, but it's always, retail's come second yeah. because it's not what I'm there for. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Robbie, thank you so much. Now let's have a chat about what did we learn from this week's episode? Our top takeaway tips for this week's episode are number one, honesty really is the best policy. Don't try and be cute and clever with your social media posts. Post from your heart and the public will absolutely buy into it. Number two, people turn to social media for more than just news. They go there for inspiration. Be sure to share your journey with your fans, warts and all. And number three, attitude is everything. Approach social media with the right intent and learn to serve first and sell second. Robbie, I want to say thank you very, very much for jumping out from behind that counter at King of the Castle and joining us on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure and I hope you found it to be the same way. It was great. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Okay, now for this week's top tech tool. Today's tech tool is a tool called Evernote. From short lists to lengthy research, no matter what your form of writing takes, Evernote keeps you focused on moving those ideas from inspiration to completion. You can easily gather everything that matters. Clip articles, capture handwritten notes, and snap photos to keep the physical and digital details of your projects with you at all times. Evernote's powerful search and discovery features makes everything you've collected really easy to find. No need to build slides, just one click and your notes are transformed into a beautiful, screen-friendly layout. Give Evernote a try and be sure to let us know what you think. Okay, that's it for this week's episode. We really hope you enjoyed the interview with the King of Coffee from King of the Castle. I know I got a lot out of that interview. If you would like to keep the conversation going, head on over to our Facebook page, drop us down a comment and let us know how you've implemented some of the learnings from this week's episode. We'd like to thank all our sponsors and in particular, the Geelong Chamber of Commerce. So on behalf of myself and my business partners, The Object, who are responsible for putting this incredible production together, we want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. So until next week, may your social media news be really great news. See you soon.